Tarot, Part 2. The River, a Game of the Gods. Since the invention, some 5,000 years ago, of the first coin, the shekel, worth 180 ounces of grain, or 3.5 troy ounces in gold, one twentieth of a derrick, we have found the fun of pastime recreational games based on odds and statistics, which are truly at the cornerstone of all humanity's economic history, that can come only in the form of flipping a coin and letting chance decide our fate. The odds of any combination of coin flips, for example four or five heads or tails in a row, is increasingly unlikely as one adds further flips but the odds of it being heads or tails are one to one, 50% either way each time. The next step up from the coin toss was the dice roll. The concept of dice is literally as old as its slang term now implies, with the knuckle bones of sheep being the precursor for the now common standard cube shape in Paleolithic Libya. By the time of the Roman Republic era, some 2,509 years ago, the standard cube-shaped dice as we know them today had evolved and become widely used the world over. However, many of the dice used in the earliest board games of recorded history were not mere cube shapes, but included all five of the platonic solids as well. Many dice used during the eldest epochs of the ancient world were cylinder dice. The first form of board game now known to historians was the royal game of Ur, or the game of twenty squares. It was played with seven black and seven white player pieces, ten two-sided coins, and three tetrahedronal dice. Although the original rules of this game have been lost to the sands of time, it is believed its rules are the same as the slightly later, similar yet much more advanced, Egyptian game called Senet. Senet, the game of passing, was the second post-diluvial form of the board game, also called the river. It dates from at least 5,100 years ago, and was played continuously through to the New Kingdom era, some 3,500 years ago. Its exact rules have since faded into obscurity. By the end of its popularity in Egypt, it had become a symbolic representation for the passage of the dead along the Amduat. This game is played with five pieces each by two players, and played on a board of three columns of ten rows. The five spaces represent the five archetypal deities of the Egyptian pantheon, Osiris, Isis, Thoth, Set or Typhon, and Horus. The five player pieces symbolize the position of these gods' respective planets relative to their starting places. Despite the apparent discrepancy in locations of origin, the rare Scandinavian game Daldos is similar to Senate, which later evolved into Hounds and Jackals. Hounds and Jackals and Daldos involve players proceeding upward along the outside columns and downward along the middle row, or vice versa, thus further indicating the original rule of Senate was to use the middle row as the only plane of motion on the board. An alternative form of portraying this central column's significance in the board's layout in the game of Senate is by comparing it to the contemporary Egyptian board game Mehen, meaning the coiled snake, also prevalent from 5,000 years ago. In the game of Mehen, the middle path, or royal road, of Senate is presented as a single spiral path. The goal is to race any number of player pieces along the coils inward, and then back outward, or vice versa, as along the river row in Senate. 
The prevalence of the religious significance to the ancient Egyptian people of both these board games should not be underestimated. The Dendara Zodiac inside the Temple of Hathor depicts the Northern Hemisphere constellations as they were recorded pictographically by the ancient Egyptians. Within their pattern is an unusual variance from exact observed positions of the stars in the constellation Draco, surrounding the circumpolar stars of the northernmost heaven's night skies. They appear to be arranged in the form of a Mehen board's spiral. While the game boards themselves have grown more complex in the Orient, and the player pieces less so, the opposite has held true in the West. In the East, there is Go, and in the West, Chess. In the East, there is Chinese checkers. In the West, there are playing cards. There should be no doubt by now that the earliest playing card systems evolved from the earliest chance and chase board games of the ancient world. The lost Egyptian Book of Thoth, depicting on its papyrus leaf pages the symbols of the lost alphabet, is the origin of what we call in modern times Tarot.